Guitar practice session 101724. These are relatively sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on and then provide a recap so you get an idea of what you're getting into. This being that recap, hoping the practice sessions generate a routine, help me to verbalize the things that I'm trying to learn to get it in my head better, possibly providing information to others learning similar things, possibly also providing for feedback if anybody sees a better way to try to get the stuff here in my mind than what I am doing. I do think presenting the information, even if no one's listening, is useful because it helps to kind of verbalize uh, what you're trying to get down in a way you might not otherwise do. So if you want to take the resources I have here and make your own practice sessions or something like that, we'll provide the worksheet. You can manipulate it however you so choose. Don't worry about plagiarism or anything like that. We have other courses on how to put together the worksheet if you want to look at that uh, in more detail to have more flexibility. The worksheet's going to be a little bit different than other worksheets in that we're trying to put everything in one angle from behind the guitar as though you are playing the guitar, not passively watching someone else play the guitar. So if you imprinted the guitar in your hands on the screen, we'd have the top string on top, top to bottom, left to right, in the same way as your perspective from behind the, the guitar and I'm gonna flip my guitar around so it looks like I'm left-handed. So once again, the fretboard will be able to line up to the guitar that I'm playing underneath it to the guitar that you're playing, which is in your hands. So we're now gonna be, my, my current objective is to basically look at the three note uh, chords, triads, major and minor, and look at the various ways we can do that. My overall objective is basically to say, okay, I would like to be able to play in any related mode, and then I would like to be able to determine when playing in any mode, every note which is in the scale, convert that into the proper chord, that being the three note triad chord, and then later we'd like to be adding the appropriate seven, nine, 11, and 13. To be able to do that, not just for the major key, but also for other modes, I need to be able to use possibly the major key as my Rosetta Stone. I'm gonna have an absolute numbering system for the modes based on the major key so that when I go to something like the Dorian, then I can at least look at the relative positions as they would be in relation to the major key to know that would I build at least a major or minor chord because the one, uh, four, five would be major, the two, three, and six would be minor. That's one of the first things People often learn from a practical sense related to the major chord, which we need to somehow be able to apply to the other modes, even though the ordering of the notes is different because all the notes are the same and the chord constructions will be basically the same. Beyond that, I would like to know uh, which 7, 9, and 13s I could be adding, which will be dependent upon, in essence, the mode that we're playing. So I would like to be able to describe each of these modes as, in essence, a chord, like a Dorian. We're going to play the related Dorian chord with a 7 in it, or the related Mixolydian chord with a 7 in it. If I just play the related Mixolydian chord, it would just still be a major chord. But I know that it's got that 7 if I know the Mixolydian's distinctive interval, which you can't use to communicate with everyone, but it might be a way that I'm thinking about it internally and communicate to some people to more clearly define chords that are simply in the same key versus chords that might have notes that are outside of the particular key and which you'll use the normal chord naming system, of course, that's based on the major scale and the minor scale. But if it's in the same key, then I think it's useful to name the different chords by the mode that you're playing because again, that gives you more information than just a major third or a minor third. It tells you the distinctive intervals for that particular mode that you can make the chord from. Now to do that, I would then like to be able to say, I would like to take each string on the guitar and wherever I'm at, I don't really care horizontally where I am at, but each string vertically, I'd like to be able to pick it and then, and then, and then figure out my favorite first and second favorite ways to play the triad. And that's usually gonna be a leaning back kind of format. Like with this, um, if I'm on the C, I've got the lean back. This way here, dude, dude. And then the lean forward, which is my bar chord, oftentimes in the top three strings. 
And then I'd also like to then think about all the different voicings I might have to play the triad, which we can basically work out with our worksheets here because I've color coded it. If I didn't have the color coding, I'd like to be able to count out where the, where the notes would be using my intervals. And oftentimes I need the inverse interval if I'm on the bottom here and I'm trying to figure out the third related to this note. So we'll basically work on that. Now, I do think that systematically, uh, the other thing that would be helpful for this is to also pick every note, which we do like at the end. I talk about this a little, but I'd like to pick each note or on each string and then just be able to say, where are all of the majors or where are the, all, all the thirds and all of the fifths? So in other words, I can take each string systematically that way because there's really only one third or fifth on each string because there's only one note of each note per octave per 12 frets. So I could say, well, here's on this second, on this string, there's the third. 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 So I can systematically look at each third. Notice when I try to build a three note chord, just with three notes, the level of complexity gets pretty complicated because there's a lot of different combinations and inversions we can play, especially if I'm looking at a note that's like in the middle of the guitar somewhere, then I have an, a lean forward chord that I can possibly play, a lean backwards, an upwards reaching up and a reaching back, and I can play ones that this is in the middle note. So that's actually a lot of different voicings around the one major note. So, so, I'd like to do that, but I'd also, it might be easy for me to then to, to be able to pinpoint more specifically which, which each fifth and each third on any particular string. So that's another thing I plan on possibly doing more uh, in the future. I tell a joke in there somewhere, but that's basically what we do. And we really start on this top strings, on this C major, and then I go to, the, to a minor and then we go to this string and do a major, and then we go to, to do a minor on this string and this string major and then a minor. So that's basically it. And then I just kind of then I just kind of jam in the key of A mainly for at the end. I was messing when I'm kind of jamming with the idea of playing in the key of A minor, but then no, noticing that the the mixolydian kind of key is the related key of G right here. And I kind of play with like the bluesy, which would be the G major, major mixolydian playing like this, this, and this with like a shuffle pattern, but try to make it sound like it's still in the key of A minor. So I play that and then I go back to this note and then I play this shuffle pattern with this, this, and then my pinky on or on and off like this note. And then I, and then I go up to the A minor here. So I try to, I try to work in that that shuffle pattern that's often a bluesy shuffle pattern, which you can see as the related mixolydian in the key of G here, but still make it sound like it's in A minor is what I was kind of thinking for at least part of the, what I was doing, like when, when I'm just messing around, which might not have been too inspiring at the end, I was kind of tired, but that's what I was part of like what I was thinking there. Continuing on with our creation of triad chords, that being three note chords, both major triads and minor triads, the difference between the two being the third. If we have a four note away major third, it's a major triad chord. Three note away minor third, we have a minor uh, triad chord. So as we make these chords, you could look at the third and just convert it to a major or minor. And therefore there's gonna be similarities between these shapes because we're gonna have the same first and the same fifth. It's the third that will change in any particular shape. So my exercise here, what I would like to be able to do is pick any note on any of the strings. And what I'm focusing in on is just any note. I don't care where it is on the fretboard horizontally, as long as I know which string it is on, on the six strings. And then I can imagine my first number one favorite chord that I can build from it, my second favorite chord I'm trying to think about, and then try to think about all the other strange ways that I might be able to build a chord from that particular place, because that will give me different voicings of the chord. So if I, if I and why is this useful? Because if I'm looking at my scales, then I would like to look at my notes within the scale, and every time I hit a note, 
I would like to be able to determine, is this a major chord or a minor chord? If I know that, then I can construct a chord off of every note that will still be in the same key. In order to do that, of course, we need to know the relative positions uh, of the notes in the major and the minor. And then when I go to another mode, like the Dorian, I'm going to have to have some way to kind of tie it into my Rosetta Stone, possibly of the major key. That's what I'm going to be thinking of it as. So I can still determine if I make a major chord or a minor chord, and then I can, I can build my, my chord around it once I know that. So right now, my focus is just on, okay, let me look at uh, each of the, a note on each of the strings and build a chord. Now, obviously, there is going to be some difference where you are horizontally on the fretboard. If you're over here somewhere towards the net, then you're going to have to build leaning forward chords and you can utilize the open strings a lot more easily. If I'm way up here on the top of the guitar, then of course I'm not going to be able to do leaning forward chords because I'm going to run out of space up here and I'm going to have to do what I would call the leaning backward type of chords. But that's, what I, that's why I want to really work in the middle of the guitar because then I can think about both the leaning forward and the leaning backwards and then going up from, from bottom to top and up left as well and try to think about the different ways I can build a chord so that no matter if it's high up on the fretboard or low on the fretboard, I have an option to build a chord from every note uh, within it. Okay. So we left off last time, I think, on the C. So we did the top string, this string, this string, and now, and I think we started the key, the C down here on this string. So again, it could be any note on this string. I'm just thinking, if I know a note on this string, like the C, then am I gonna? What's my default chord that I'm gonna build? To know that, I gotta say, is it gonna be a major chord or a minor chord? By the way, my, I'm thinking that once we stop doing this, once we get past this then we start thinking systematically about the seventh and we think about adding the seventh on the major and then look at the modes where the seven is different right and then we can start seeing where the seventh would be added on like a mixolydian where it has a different seven and then we could do the same for the nine the 11 and the 13 adding those into our repertoire in a more systematic way so that we can kind of so we can get a better comp idea of it but first we work with the triads because that's the baseline you got to get the foundation first and so now we're looking at all the all the triads now one other way i'm thinking about possibly doing this by the way is to thinking at each note that i look at on each of the six strings then i should be able to find every third and every fifth so i want to be able to say if i'm on this note where where is every reachable third? And one way you can think about that, by the way, is to just look at every string, right? If I'm on, if I'm on, if this is my root, where's the third above it, right? It's going to be over here. On this string, the third is over here. On this string, the third is down below. On this string, the third is over here. That might not be reachable, but I can visualize where the third is and I can systematically see where all the thirds are. Remember, there's only, there's only one unique note on each string up to 12 frets because because that's all the if you played out like a one scale on the piano that's like one string so that means that there's there's only there can only be one possible third on each of the strings up until you get past the 12th fret right so so that means that I should be able to 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 systematically look at each string and say Where's the third on this string compared to this? Where's the third on this string? 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 And the same with the fifth. Where's the fifth on this string? Where's the fifth on this string? Where's the fifth on this string? And that way, again, systematically, I know not just one octave of the fifth, but I know all of the fifths, which should help me to make combinations of one, three, fives around this note. So I might kind of look at it that way later. That's another way to kind of visualize it. But... Let's try to think about it this way right now. So if I'm on this note, what's my default chord? It's probably that A shape, meaning I'm going to say the, the one above it is the fifth and the one below it is the third. So boom, boom, boom. Now this shape is a little tricky because of course the one below it is a major third and you would think it would be back here, but no, because of the fault line, it's up here. So if you counted this up, this would be five, four, 
four note away major third, and then the fifth above it, if I don't know that's the fifth, I know going from G down to here, it, it might be more easy to see that that's a perfect fourth when we go through our intervals. And the inverse of the perfects are the other perfects. So if, if G to C is a perfect fourth, from C to G is a perfect fifth, therefore. So you have that shape. Now if I pick up the A at the bottom, not too big of a problem because I got the 13. That would be the 13 over here. But I'd like to kind of pick it up without that and just be like... And of course the, four the full bar chord would be leaning back here for the A shape. Okay, so that's my go-to shape. My second, go my second favorite shape on this one would most likely be the lean back shape. So that would be going this way, which might be useful if I'm high up on the guitar or I'm playing on the higher register down here. So I can reach back to the G and then right there. And I can mute the G above it if I want to. I can mute the, the D string with this finger pretty easily. So I can still be kind of reckless with my picking and still pick that one up. <clears throat> so that's the other way. We could try to get, we could try to bar that and get the, get the G on top if you wanted to. But that's a little more difficult. Yeah, let's not get into that. <laughs> All right, and then, so that, so then, <clears throat> that's basically the lean back shape. The lean forward shape, I have a G over here, but I can't do much with that just in this quadrant, right? So what I'm thinking now is by quadrant, Here's the leaning forward quadrant. Here's the leaning backwards quadrant. Here's the reaching up quadrant. And here's the reaching up and back quadrant. So, so what we did here is I, my favorite shape is in the middle, right? The C is in the middle. The leaning forward shape, I don't have enough room because normally if the C was like up here and I was making a chord on a lean forward chord, I would have the third, which would be down here, which is three strings down from it. And I don't have three strings down uh, from this C. One, two, three. So I, I'm, I don't have that uh, that other string to get the third. So I could lean forward from here and get the fifth right there. But I'd have to arpeggiate to get the fifth and then the third. Or right, I have to. So so that's what I've got going there. And then if I go up to this quadrant, now I've got a lot of room at the top quadrant. So I've got the fifth above it here. And then I've got the third, which is here. So that's the way I can play up. So I can go from here to here. There's the fifth. I know the fifth is right above it because that's usually the case. Because if I went from G down, it would be the fourth. Going up would be the fifth. It's used, I start to recognize that pretty clearly now. So it's not something I have to do the inverse of. This one's harder to see. I probably, I'm going to try to learn that shape. But if I didn't know that shape, I can count it out by saying, okay, I need a four, I need a four note away uh, mi uh, minor third. So, so the distance between this from here to here is going to be the inverse, which is 12 minus four, which is an eight note away, which would be a minor six. I can count up from here and say, how can I get there? Well, this would be, negative five, I'm going to say negative 10, and then nine, eight. So I could count it up that way, right? Because there's five between each string. So five, 10, nine, eight, or I'd say negative five, negative 10, nine, eight, if you want to think about it that way. And so that means that this distance th is going to be a an eight note away minor uh, nine, and therefore from the C up, is a four note away major third. So you have that shape, which is not too bad. And I can mute it like this. I can also bar it off. You might like play it like with a bar, like that maybe. But when you play it with a bar, it's likely that you're gonna pick up that E, which isn't a problem because we know that's in the shape right there as well. So that's not a problem. But you might end up hitting the top string too. I kind of like doing it this way if I'm trying to just get those three strings only because I can usually mute the one below. It's kind of hard to mute that one. But I also have more ability to vary my how much pressure on the fingers, which is kind of nice because then I can, you know, vary the muting sound if I want to make it sound different. 
which you don't have much control over if you do a bar, which means you're just trying, you're just trying to get the thing to ring out. So then, okay, so we have that one. Uh, I, I could then, there's, there's another third like way over here. Uh, there's, but that's not, I don't think that is at all. That's like at the 12th. That ain't happening. That ain't happening. Uh, and then there's another fifth, like way up here. So if I'm on the C, that'd be like at the 10th. So I could reach like that fifth, but that's all I'm gonna reach if I'm grabbing that one. So that'd be a pretty awkward way to do a power chord. So that's not too useful. All right, let's go back this way. If I have a fifth above here, is there a third back here? Well, the third is back here or like an open. If it, if, if it, if there's no way I'd be able to reach that if it was, so that's not very useful. Maybe I can go to this third and then this fifth, right? So again, how would I know I can get to that? That one would be the third. I'd say again, the distance would be eight right because the inverse of a four note away major third is an eight note away minor six so this would be five uh six or negative five negative six negative seven negative eight right so that so like oh i could count that out and say okay that's my that one and then i can play up here now that's a pretty little wonky of a shape but it's kind of cool because no one probably plays that going to get a different sound and I can easily pretty easily mute this a if I don't want that to ring out with with my top finger and I can get and I could so I can play it and I can mute the ones below pretty easily so that might be worth playing with okay I mean if someone says play a C major and you do that <laughs> It might be impressive at least. I don't know how practical it is, but it's like, okay. So then we're gonna say, okay, uh, that's cool. Now what? So now if I did like the fifth on top of it, we did that before, the fifth on top and then this one below. Notice there's a fifth up here. And if I use this in the middle, I could go below here and say, okay, now we have the third down here. So if I was like, okay, there's this one and now I want the third below. So I could do that, which is basically a variant of the A shape where I could just add the top string on it because then I would just add a fifth, a fifth, and then the first. So I could do that. And then I could go, and then if I want like the third on top, I could pick like this third and then say the fifth is over here, which is that weird stretchy shape which I'm starting to see more often, which it could be interesting. So here, here, and here. Wait a sec, that's not right. Is that right? The E's right there. This would have to be up here. Ooh, that's stretchy. but it's more stretchy because of the kink in the tuning to get that G. But again, impressive shape. They're like, oh, make a C chord. And you're like, oh, here you go. <laughs> you know? Uh, and then, so, but in any case, uh, then we've got, we could do this, which might be a little bit less stretchy. So now we've got the, the three over here. So I'm like, okay. That's more doable. And then down here is the G. So, wait a sec. Did I have that right before? It was the E's over here. No, I, that's not even right. I was wrong there because I was up here on the F. So I can't even reach that. That wouldn't even be doable. All right, pardon me. I messed up. Uh, okay. So what if I did this one to like a G right there? That's doable. I think I have that one right. Are you sure? You confused me on that. Okay. That's that one. All right. 
Okay, let's move on. Moving on. Uh, let's do a minor. Let's do like the D. Let's go to the Dorian. <coughs> Here, and then let's choose this D. Same thing, we're on the same string, but now in the minors. So if that was my shape right there, I'm like, okay, there's the D, but now I need to build a minor around it. What's my go-to shape? Probably the A shape, which would look like this. So this would be an A minor shape, like that. Or I can go with the full bar chord around that, which means I'd reach up here, pick it up like that, or I can pick up this bottom one as well. But the triad would be the easiest. So we have that. So that's probably my go-to shape. And then I could say I, I have a, 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 and notice again, that puts it in the middle, just, just like what we had before, except now the third, once again, is dropped, right? So we had this one before was like this, but now it would be the same thing here, but the third is dropped. So then if I go this way, I can pick up my, my fifth up here, but I have, of course, the same problem. If I pick up that fifth, the, the only third I have available to me because I'm way down here is up here is there so the fifth is a power chord but it's up one other string so I could arpeggiate like here I could go one three five one three five one three five but I can't really get a full uh, reach there let's go up this way and now let's go up into this quadrant so I can go the fifth is always above it I'm starting to see that pretty easily and then, I, and then of course I have the third here, but I'm going up, so there's the third. Now I have a minor third. So how could I count that one out if I didn't know where it was and I hadn't color coded it? It would be, it's a three note away minor third I'm looking for, 12 minus three is nine. So the inverse would be a nine note away, which would be a major six. If I count that up, I would call that negative five, negative 10, nine. And that would get me there, right? So I could, so I could say if that's a nine, if F to D is a nine note away major six, then from D to F is a three note away uh, minor third. So it'd be boom, boom, boom. Which is a pretty easy shape to play, not too uncomfortable. And I can mute the string atop, atop on top easily and this string down here pretty easily. You could play these two together, by the way. Like you could go boom, boom, boom. Picking up this F but then you're playing like two thirds. That's pretty cool, two thirds. To get a more heavy on the thirds. Uh, so we have that. Uh, and there's, the only other A is like way out here. That's not too reachable. So let's go this way. Let's go with that fifth here and then go back. So it's usually tough to reach back here on the minor, it's further reach on the minor to go back all the way to that F, that ain't gonna happen, right? That ain't happening. So I could say, all right, well, what if I picked like this fifth up here and then I only have to go back to like this F, see if I get this right without totally messing people up this time. There's the F, that's reachable. And then I have an A. <laughs> That's actually doable. Again, how would I find that? I could say, where's the F on this string? Uh, it's a, it's gotta be a nine note away. So I'd be five, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, negative nine, right? Nine note away. And this has to be, this is the fifth. So I'm like, okay, the fifth, the fifth on that string, where would it be if I counted it out? It would be, well, the fifth is a seven note away perfect fifth, therefore the inverse is 12 minus seven, which is a five note away, perfect fourth. So negative five, negative 10, negative 20, uh, negative 21, negative 22, minus 12 uh, is, uh, I think I messed up. I, I just went stupid right there, minus 12. It's gonna be a four note away. I, it, it should be an eight note away or nine. Okay, I'm not even gonna, it'd be five, 10, 15, 
it'd be 5, 10, 15, 16, 17. 17 minus 12 is 7 minus 2, which would be 5. There. 5 note away, perfect fourth. And so the inverse would be a 7 note away, perfect fifth. All right, sorry about that. I went kind of stupid for a second. It happens. It's kind of my default position, actually. All right, so now let's say that we pick, like, if I pick the, the A on top, we can pick a an F below. Could I pick another F? I got the F on this string. What about the F on this string? It's probably too far back. We're not going to be able to reach that one. The F on, and so then it would be way up here when it repeats. So that's probably not happening either. What if I picked uh, this F and I wanted to pick another another A? So now I've got an A down here. And again, I've got that kind of interesting skipping every other string thing happen let's see if I can get it right this time that totally seems doable that's interesting right there that's doable why didn't I do that on the C what was wrong with me doing it on the C I did something funny because it should be this G C E isn't that right should be uh anyway so shouldn't it it should be the g it should be the c and then if it was on the c there's the e and then it would be the a that's i didn't do that okay interesting all right so here but minor pretty easy to play actually i can mute those strings in between It's hard to mute the top string and then ring out the bottom string. Now wait a second, something ain't right there. This has got to be big. Could I mute that top string? hard not to get the middle notes to ring out sometimes. Maybe if I played it like this and then I tried to no, it's like, anyway, I'll play with that later. But we have that option and then I could pick the A up here and be like, okay, what about that? Then if I'm on this D, then I've got like an F here and then an A here. That's doable. I'd have to mute this one. Can't reach my thumb over. Okay, let's do uh, let's do the next one. Let's go down to this string, and here's like a major. Let's go to that F. That would be what the Lydian. Lydian. Let's go to that F. Ba boom. All right. If that if I'm on this string and I'm playing a major, what would be my default? That would be of course the D shape, like that. Boom boom boom. So once again, it's, it's got that one in the middle with these three strings, or with these two at least, it's always going to be the one where it's in the middle that's my favorite. So we have this boom, and then this here, because of course I have the fifth above it, which is shifted back because of the kink in the tuning, and then the major third, which is a normal relationship to it here. So that makes sense. Okay. So then obviously if I move lean forward, I can get the fifth, but I'm not going to be able to get the third but I can arpeggiate it again so I could do something like my normal so now I have my normal power chord fifth and my third one three five whoops wait a sec I'm, am I on F oh, oh it's up here one three five one three five one three five one three five okay makes perfect sense 
And then if I go back, if I lean back, then again, I don't have any room to get anything other than the third if I'm just leaning back. So I got, so I could say, and then pick up the five, which is up here. So one, three, five, one, three, five, one, three, five, one, three, five. So that's pretty nice, easy arpeggiating. Okay. And then I can say, okay, what about this quadrant? I've got a whole lot of space up here. So my fifth now is not really right above it. So technically it's not in this quadrant, right? I have to switch between the two quadrants. So if I want to technically be in this quadrant now, I'm going to say <laughs> here, I'll go here and then I could go here. So now I've got that skipping every other string thing again, but I'm seeing a pattern with that. So now this is a here, skipping every other string. And I should be able to, this one I think I can lean my fingers back to mute the string in between. So that's actually more doable. I don't I could put my thumb behind and still mute. it okay so so and then another I don't have another third but I have a I have a C like over here and then the third would be up here that's quite a stretch I doubt that's doable let's go this quadrant if I went to the fifth right there then my my third would be up top that's basically my bar chord is it or let's see so here's my F. Now I'm picking up the A and then the C. So I'm trying to mute everything with my with this finger and just pick up the A, C, F. pick up that D, if I pick up the D and the G, then I'm picking up, that's okay, I'm picking up the 9 and the 13, so I could just borrow this off, like that, and think of it as a, as now it's an F, but I'm picking up the 9 and the 13, which is kind of weird, but okay, there's that, and then if I cross over these two quadrants, I have a C here and an A here. So now I could say from here, here, and here, that's my, that's my C shape. So I could reach up here too to pick the other F up. So that's my C shape. So that's very common. Or I can play it like this. Then I drop the fifth. Okay. And then and then I picked. So I also had this here. And then that. So I think that's basically it. Let's go, let's go fifth up top, and then the third is down here. I could also pick, wait a sec, the fifth up top. And then the third was here. Where's the third on this string? That's our, That's where it is. Duh. Okay. So what if I pick the third up top, like back here, and then the fifth down here? So that's doable. So I could say, okay. So if I'm on this, I can say I want the third up top here, and then the fifth down here. Interesting. I can also pick the third way over here. So now I'd be like, okay. I'd be like, okay. That's not doable. 
I'd be way back here. All right, not doable. I ain't touching it. All right, so let's. We've basically exhausted that. Let's pick a minor in this position. Maybe this A up here. So let's go to the to the minor. A. All right. Let's try to tell a joke first. I'll tell a joke. Ah, I might have a shorter session here. All right, this could be somewhat offensive, but not really. But it's got like a it's got like a Halloween thing in it since it's Halloweeny, and um, and it, it's nothing personal. It's just a joke. Okay, I love my mother. It's got mothers in it. So, but that's how joke is because it's a joke. Okay, here we go. I used to get called a son of a bee, a son of a bee all the time, which which is always annoying because it's like, why are you, why are you yelling at me? What, what do you, what do you think? I'm happy about it. I mean, wh why, why, why are you yelling at me when it's my mom? That's, that's the one that's being a son of a bee for crying out loud. You think I, do you think I have any control over the situation here? Do, does your mom do what you tell her? I mean, I'm more, I'm more of a victim here than you are for crying out loud. But it, you know what? It's even worse for many young people today. They have it even worse than, than most people like my age, right? Because if, I mean, if social influencers on Twitter are to be believed these days, it's highly likely that you're actually the biological son of two bees right two bees for crying out loud which sucks because you would think that you're you you're being called you're going to get called twice as many people will be yelling at you most likely that you're a son of a bee right because you have two bees out there that are obviously causing the problem and then and then you'll have to keep correcting them whenever they call you a son of a bee and you're like no sir you're wrong i'm actually the son of two bees right and then and then and they actually conceived me in a magic witch coven ritual as is the case for about 95 percent of the population according to according to twitter and modern modern movies you know honestly considering the entire the entire witch coven was actually in on the conception process i i may actually not just be the son of two bees but the son of like an entire bee gaggle I'm the son of an entire bee gaggle for crying out loud. However, to be fair, most bees are witches, but all witches aren't necessarily bees. You don't you don't have to keep you have to keep this stuff straight. But so if you if you're really if you really want your yelling son of a bee at me to be at all helpful to you, you're going to have to be a lot more specific, right? You can't just call me a son of a bee because I don't know who like which one you're referring to. You, I mean, who, who exactly are you even talking about? Possibly you can use the term, you son of a bee gaggle, right? That would be more accurate. Then at least, then at least I can, I can maybe huddle up my mother meeting in a, in a, in a huddle and we can get together and do something about the problem that you apparently have with, with them. So you son of a bee gaggle is more accurate than a son of a bee. Because there's many of them. It's a gaggle, you see? You son of a bee gaggle. Okay. All right. So if we're on this string, on this second to bottom string, then how are we going to build a chord? What's my default chord? Well, it's going to be this, it's going to be a D again, but now we're on a D minor. So it's going to look like this. Boom, boom, boom. We just dropped that third. It was over here when I was on the G. Boom, boom, boom. If I drop the third back, which is in key here, we're going to say, now we're going to say that this is going to be the, th the, 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 how, how exactly am I fingering this? Where am I? I am here and I want, uh, here, here, duh. Okay, boom, boom, boom. So there's my D shape, which you could lean back to here to get your D like that and get the full shape grabbing 
another A up here. So it's a D minor shaped A chord. But oftentimes it's easy to just grab these three and possibly mute the one above it with my with this finger, with my ring finger, so that I don't ring out that D and I have a little bit more leeway to get crazy with the picking. All right, so then, so then, uh, that means this one's in the middle again. If I was to lean forward, then obviously I only have a, uh, a fifth here. I have a third over here, so I can arpeggiate it again. So I could go uh, one, three, five, one, three, five, one, one, three, five. So I, but that's all I can do really going that way. If I go backwards, then I can go to my third here. But that's all I'm going to get in that quadrant. So I can arpeggiate one, three, five, one, three, wait, wait, not there. It would be here. One, three, five, one, three, five, one, three, five, one, three, five, one, three, five. So I can do that. And then if I go up into the upper quadrant, now I've got the fifth is back here. So again, not really technically in the upper quadrant. If I go in the upper quadrant only, now I got to go up to the third and then I can go up here. So I have a third and then up here. So I could go, uh, so I'm on this A, I can go to the third and then to the E up here. <laughs> It's doable. It's kind of a kind of a wonky fingering. If I pull in that F, it would be the 13. So it's kind of wonky. Uh, if I go to if I cross over the two quadrants, I can go into this shape, which is totally doable. It's probably like maybe my second it would be my second favorite shape i started i stopped doing the second favorites so now i've got the the fifth is above it this way because it's a kink in the tuning between these two so instead of it being right above it it's back here and then i have the third up top so that's totally doable i can mute the string above it the a string and the string below it pretty easily It would be cool if I could reach up to that A right there. Then it would be like a C shaped, a C minor shaped chord. But that's kind of hard to do. So, in any case, <clears throat> so then I could say, all right, let's lean back this way. If that's the five, I have another third up here. So I could say, we go, okay, there's boom, boom, and then the third up top, and now I can mute everything underneath it. Wait a sec, that's not right. Back here. So maybe this would be easy to play with my pinky. If I played out the, I could play out the E and the A here if I was to do this, and even the D is the 11. So if I barred this, no, wait a sec, I'm on the F. It would be the F. So if I bar this, I could only bar the F, and I could try to try to make this this string not barred. So I pick up that F, which would be the 13. <laughs> So then uh, I could pick up the C way back here. No, I can't. That's ridiculous. It's impossible. Por favor for crying out loud. All right. Well, what if I pick up this C, the third, then I have a fifth over here. So I could do that. Tal vez. Let's say here, here, and then this E. Totally doable. 
And then as I pick up that E, I'm muting, I'm muting with this finger, so I mute out this D. I could play that D out, and that would be an 11. That's a way I can add an 11 in there. So then if I if I keep that third and I go below, I could pick my fifth up down here because I already did the other way. So I could say here's boom, boom, boom. Do that. So that's totally doable. It's kind of a nice sound actually. I could pick this up and that. little difficult. I can only do that on the high register possibly. I could add the F there too with this bar and that would be adding the 13. Okay. All right. Mui B to the N. Let's go down to uh, the next one. Let's try this C down here back up to the major. Back up to the majors. Let's try this C right here. So if I was on the bottom string, what would be my go-to shape? Well, I know there's, here I'm on this C, I know right above it I have a fifth, because there's the same shape in the tuning, I'm starting to see that fifth clearly, and then the third is over here because of the kink in the tuning, because again, I'm looking for a major third, four note away major third, the inverse would be an eight note away minor ninth, so this would be negative five and then uh, negative five and then negative 10, nine, eight. Right, so that's how I can count that out. And so it'd be a boom, boom, boom. And then I can mute the string above it with, my, with, the, with the tip of my finger so I can play that. A lot of people would probably bar this, something like that. I kind of, again, I, I tend to put my fingers down like this because then I have, can lift the finger up and just have more control if I'm able to do that. But convenience is nice too. So either way, so that's be my go-to shape. If it was the minor, this would be back here, right? Because it would be flattened. Okay, so that, so that puts it on the bottom, which is all we can really do. There's a whole lot of space up top here, though, so I could say, well, where's another third up top? So if I keep this as my fifth, I could say there should be a third on this string. There it is. There should be a third on this string. It's way back here. I'm not going to reach that. There should be a third on this string. It's right there. So I could say, let's pick up these two and then the third back here on the seventh. So I could do that. It's kind of wonky because it's inverted. I'm not ringing out the A or the, I'm muting the A and the D. If I played the A and the D, I'd be adding a, a 13 and a nine, so that's doable. It's kind of hard to see it as a C chord because the C is on the bottom, but you can think of it like that. And then I'm gonna say, okay, let's say uh, on this string up top, it's way over here, so I could try to reach that. That's not doable not happening. Okay, what if I go to this third and then I'm like, okay, let's go to that third and then pick the fifth up like over here. I could be like, boom, boom. That's pretty stretchy. Doable, but not very practical. Yeah, that's a little too, that's a little too much. Uh, there's also a G over here. So I could be like, boom. I could be like, boom, boom. That's my every other string one, which I'm starting to recognize more often. So I could do that. Let's try to mute that one. But then I don't want to mute the one on the bottom. It's the one where it's hard for me to get the bottom to ring out. No, I could 
multiply these two and this, these two, this, uh, what is it? These two, and then the and then the e is on the nine. Okay, what is going on? The e is on here, and then here. Is that right? I could do that, and what I was doing was this, playing every other, I could try to bar this, bar this, boom, and then the G. should be so easy to play. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, anyways, we have another G way over here. I could play this third and then this fifth. Might be doable. Falls on this C, the fifth and the third. And then I can bar this across. Yeah. All right, let's go to the minor. Maybe this A right here. So let's go back to the minor. Ultra vez por favor with the minor. Here we go. What's my go-to shape if I had a minor at the bottom, like right there? Right above it, boom. Straight bar. So we got the fifth above it, and then we've got the third above that. Boom. Okay, so what if I took this fifth and I look for another? Where's the third over here? It's too far out, that ain't happening. What about the third on this string? It's right there, that's totally doable. That's doable, dude. How about like that? Now wait a second. That's another third. So it looks like a C shape, but I'm actually playing... I'm thinking of it as an A minor because the C would pick up that G in it. Which is the seventh of the A minor. Interesting. Okay. In any case, but I could just play these two. Where's the C up top? The C on this string is there. So I could be like, uh, that, no, I can't do that. I can bar it. That's ridiculous. Why would you do that? That's stupid. All right, let's take this, uh, this third. If that's the third, I can pick up the fifth over here. So now it's like, okay. Boom, boom, E's way over there. Or I could bar this off. It's hard to get that top note unless I actually finger it. Okay, but the one I'm going to lose is the root that I'm thinking of is the A. <laughs> so in any case, I have an E there. I've got an E up top. So I could be like, boom, boom, boom. Which again, I could bar it off and pick that up. I'm trying to mute the D string. Of course, there's an A right there, so that's my good old, my favorite my variation on my favorite shape, which is just this. So then, okay, and then we've got an E up there. That's not happening. So let's. We also have a fifth, a third here. If I pick up that third, 
I could pick up the E here. So I could go like, oh, uh, oh, uh, I could go, oh. Uh. Why would you want to go, oh? Uh? So that's basically it. So next time I'm thinking maybe I start to think about the seven. We look at our triads on each string and add the seven. And I'm also thinking that I should be able to pick each string and I want to systematically think like where's the third where are all the thirds and all of the fifths? So if I'm on this A, I could be like, obviously there's a third here, there's my favorite third, and then there's a third down here. And then there's a third here. So I should be able to pick a third on each string. So I should be able to say, if I'm on here, where are all my related thirds? I have a third on this string, which is here. And then there should be a third on this string, which is way out here. Which is not really. And then there should be a third on this string, which is here. should be a third on this string which is back here and then there should be a third on this string which is up here those higher ones of course I'm not as familiar I should be able to do the same with the fifth. Obviously, I have a fifth, which is a power chord right here. I, ha I should have a fifth on this string, which I'm familiar with because that makes my four like that. I should have a fifth on this string here, which I'm less familiar with. That's on the nine. should have a fifth on this string, which is part of my bar chord. And I should have a fifth on this string, which I probably wouldn't be able to reach if it wasn't open that way or that way. So I should practice that more, but whatever.
good. 